Welcome to the Counselor Soapbox video. This is the first in our series, Alcohol, the Drug We Love and Hate, uh, by David Joel Miller. Uh, there's photos in here, and they are all licensed under the Creative Commons. I've gotten them either from Pixabay or Wikimedia Commons. And then there's some material which previously appeared on the CounselorSoapbox.com. Uh, website. Much of this is material that we use in the classes I teach on substance abuse counseling. Alcohol is a drug that our society has mixed feelings about. At times we love it. It's portrayed as part of happiness and good times, and there are many recipes for making various alcoholic drinks. But we also have uh, conflicted feelings about it. We see people who've developed a serious drinking problem. We see results in increased crime, uh, DUIs, and, and various uh, societal problems. So we're going to take a look at some of the good and some of the bad features First, by getting some background information on alcohol and its function as a drug. Alcohol has been around for a long time. In fact, it seems that most mammals produce the enzyme needed to break alcohol down. A quick look at videos will show you that uh, there are uh, plenty of times that animals, primates, and elephants will eat rotting or decaying fruit, which has been fermented and has an alcohol content. Before we had refrigeration and food safety, people ate whatever they could, and it was uh, common for people to eat things that might have begun to spoil or ferment, but if you're starving, you eat it. There's evidence that humans were using alcohol as far back as the old Stone Age, somewhere in the 10,000 to 50,000 years before the current era. By 6,000 uh, BCE, there were recipes for making wines. The early wines were largely made from berries. Grape wines didn't come into play until later. And in the Egyptian culture. They had temples dedicated to the brewing of beer and recipe books specifically for making various types of beer, as well as an annual holiday for drinking beer. So we can see that alcohol has been a part of human history from the very beginning. Alcohol has been a part of the history of North America for a very long time. In the United States, one of our first recorded events was the pil pilgrims arriving at Plymouth Rock. One of the reasons cited for them stopping at that location was that they had begun to run out of grog, principally beer and rum. While pilgrims and Puritans are often confused, it's important to note that pilgrims uh, did not have an objection to alcohol. In fact, they were often heavy consumers of alcohol. There was some use of a native type of alcohol, pulque, which was uh, produced by the native populations in Mexico, probably around 2000 AD. Uh, in early American history, um, one of the early numbers we have is that in the period after the American Revolution, from 1790 to 1830, Americans were extremely heavy drinkers, averaging five standard drinks, and we'll talk about what a standard drink is later, per day, per person. That's a very high rate of consumption. Alcohol's use has been interwoven in our human culture from the very beginning. What are some of the common reasons to drink alcohol? Well, alcohol is frequently used for rituals. We use it at weddings for toasts. 
It's also used for convivial reasons. We get together and part of our socializing and happiness is use of alcohol. Some people use it as parts of meals and in some areas alcohol, particularly uh, products like beer or wine, have been a part of the diet for a long time. There is some nutritional use of it. Uh, it's one of the major sources of B vitamins in some parts of the world comes from beer. By the Middle Ages, it was common to, for alcohol to be used uh, as part of the birth ceremony, uh, at marriages, and at death. And it's important to note, while it's had a long position in our society, not everyone and not every culture drinks alcohol. Some other reasons that people drink or have consumed alcohol throughout history was for ceremonial use. It was used at the crowning of kings, uh, at the installation of leaders, and when we sign treaties to this day, we still see our executives, uh, government officials, consuming alcohol, a toast of champagne to celebrate the conclusion of the treaty. Many government functions, state dinners, uh, include the serving of alcohol. Alcohol is also used as an ingredient to try to make events more fun. Some people consume alcohol as a form of stress relief, and some people use it for emotional regulation. When they're upset, when they're angry, when they're sad, they may drink alcohol in an effort to change the way we feel. And there's certainly a great deal of recreational use at taverns, bars, clubs, part of the dating scene, part of uh, getting together to watch sporting events, and so on. Alcohol has medicinal uses. It's used as an antiseptic. If you think of the times you may have gotten a vaccination and the skin was cleaned with alcohol to prevent infection. It has been used at some points in uh, history as an anesthetic. Drink a little whiskey before they pull the uh, bullet out was a common theme in, in the old westerns. The problem with this is that the uh, amount needed to dull the pain is very close to the amount that will actually kill someone. So it's a very unreliable anesthetic. Alcohol has also been used in making salves to apply externally, tonics, which are drunk, and elixirs, which have various amounts of alcohol and other ingredients. It was even commonly used in the period after the Civil War as an ingredient, along with morphine, to make soothing syrups, which were administered to uh, women for various female complaints, quote unquote. And also, soothing syrups were often given to babies. Uh, think of the common remedy of rubbing whiskey on the gums. Well, at one point in time, products containing alcohol, fruit juice flavorings, and morphine were sold uh, over the counter to people to use for babies who were in discomfort. There are many different kinds of alcohol. When most people refer to alcohol, they are thinking purely of ethyl alcohol, the kind which can be drunk. But remember, there is also an isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, that's normally used on the skin methyl alcohol, the product of fermentating um, wood products, but ethanol or ethyl alcohol is the beverage alcohol. Uh, it's been used the longest of probably any drugs on earth and probably currently the most common drug uh, used on earth with the exception maybe of caffeine. One of the reasons to underline this is that you can get some very serious problems from consuming other than ethyl alcohol. Uh, consuming methyl alcohol can result in blindness, deafness, loss of uh, 
uh, bodily functions. So some serious and permanent medical problems as a result of consuming methyl alcohol. One of the challenges in talking about alcohol is looking at the reasons why people begin to drink versus the reasons why they continue. Many people first get initiated into drinking as a part of the rite of passage. Um, the heaviest drinkers are typically between 18 and 25. Initially, it's uh, something everybody or many people believe that everyone else is doing. And it sounds like fun and enjoyable and a part of growing up. Later on, however, some people, as they get older, uh, alcohol plays a smaller part in their lives. They either stop drinking or drink only occasionally. A few people, however, continue to increase their consumption. And over time, it becomes a significant problem for them. How is alcohol produced? Well, initially you need a source of sugar. Could be berries, grains, fruit. Uh, grapes are used commonly today, though uh, for other beverages, other grains are used. And yeast is added. Now, there's wild yeast floating around in the air that settles on things, but the yeast used in making alcohol are particular strains which produce particular results. Once the yeast is added to uh, a solution which contains the, the source of sugar and uh, enough fluid for the yeast to move about, the process of fermentation occurs as the yeast begin to break down the fruits and grains. Normally, the maximum amount of alcohol that can produ be produced from natural fermentation is around 15%. Uh, depending on the process, most books will tell you 12 to 15%. There are two ways in which the alcohol content can be taken higher than 15%. One is called fortification, in which pure alcohol from another source is added to the product, raising the alcohol content. The other process, probably more common, is distillation. This you'll see in the diagram on the right. The initial uh, fermentation product is cooked, and then the steam from that is cooled. Uh, you could cook beer, wine, or any other uh, beverage uh, made that way. The, as the steam is cooled and condensed, uh, some of the water is left behind so that the distillation produces a product that is higher in alcohol content. Say the first cooking might double the content. Repeated distillations, cooking the, the first result several times and cooling it and, and recondensing it, can increase the concentration uh, be on that point. We use two different systems for measuring the alcohol content of beverages. Um, depending on the country you're in, there are slight variations of these. Beer and wine, because of their lower alcohol content, are typically measured in percentage. There may be laws in your area uh, which designate what percentage of alcohol uh, beer would 
contain. Uh, wine usually is fermented to the maximum. The other uh, way of measuring alcohol content is for those things that are distilled where the content has been raised by repeated cooking and condensing. Distilled liquors are rated in terms of proof, and we'll see in a moment the measure of the conversion between the two. So what's the connection between converting the percentage of alcohol to proof? Well, proof comes from colonial days when an alcoholic beverage was added to gunpowder, a fine trail of gunpowder, and then lit with a match. Too little alcoholic content didn't burn well. Too much flared up almost explosively. A good amount would burn and would be considered proof. And so 100% alcohol is 200 proof. A proof of good alcohol would be about 50%. Many alcoholic beverages today are in the 86 to 100 range. So 86 proof alcoholic beverage would be 43% alcohol. Uh, the converse, a 12% wine would be 24 proof. Uh, it's important to note that you cannot have, uh, at least here in the normal conditions, pure 100% alcohol. I suppose it's theoretically possible uh, in conditions of a vacuum or in space to manufacture pure alcohol. But alcohol so strongly is attracted to water that if you could fill a glass with 100% pure alcohol, stand back and watch that glass, what would happen is the glass would begin to overflow as the alcohol sucks the moisture out of the air. The result is that the strongest alcohol available commercially is 191 proof, which is 95.5% alcohol. In California, 151 is the strongest beverage which is, can legally be sold. There are several theories about why people use alcohol and continue to use it. One is that it reduces anxiety and stress. Alcohol is a depressant, and as a result, it shuts down or anesthetizes various parts of the brain. That means that people who are anxious feel less anxiety, or people who are stressed feel less stress, at least temporarily. It does produce feelings of power, largely because it disinhibits people and so they take more risky actions, feel stronger and more competent. It does change consciousness uh, and people like that effect sometimes. There are also expectations. If somebody expects alcohol to make them calmer, it does. If someone who is drinking alcohol believes that alcohol will make them stronger, uh, not feeling as much pain under the influence of an anesthetic, they tend to uh, exert themselves more. There are a great many myths about alcohol, some of them extremely dangerous. One is the belief that it makes you warmer. Remember the St. Bernards with the cask of uh, brandy around their neck? The problem is that alcohol dilates the blood vessels and capillaries close to the surface of the skin. The heat from the core, the center of the body, is gradually released into the air, making you feel considerably warmer, but you are in fact losing heat rapidly. Drinking alcohol uh, in cold weather can actually increase the risk of freezing to death. Many people believe that alcohol makes them sexy or more sexual. Not, in fact, true. If you've ever been sober and watched somebody of the opposite sex uh, behaving in a, inappropriate ways, uh, it's likely you were not attracted to the person who was sloppy drunk. It's also true that while people may think they are more sexual, 
alcohol can inhibit the sexual response. In men, uh, too much alcohol at one time or too much over a number of occasions can actually result in uh, impotence. It's also common to believe that alcohol makes you more of a man or a woman because it's socially uh, desirable. It's a lot of belief that alcohol cures your ills. The truth is it doesn't cure anything. It just temporarily makes you not feel or think about what your problems might be. Um, another myth is that when you're drinking alcohol, you will feel less scared, often referred to as liquid courage. The trouble is that alcohol eventually wears off and the courage is gone. And some people believe they can function better, but any uh, scientific study of reaction time or coordination or thinking seems to disprove this. People do not function better under the influence. Lastly, a common misconception myth about alcohol is that everyone drinks. In fact, it turns out in America that half of the adults who have, are able to drink legally have not had a drink in the last 30 days. So the number of people who drink and drink heavily or repeatedly is much smaller than the number that most people who drink heavily uh, would assume. What are some of the basic problems with alcohol? We'll look at this in more detail in a future video, but alcohol can cause a great deal of pain and tragedy. There are few cultures on earth that promote temperance and a few that promote abstinence, but in general, most cultures seem to approve of the use of alcohol. So in the next video, we'll talk about the nature and the costs of some of the problems with alcohol. Thanks for watching. Hope some of this information has been useful or informative. And I hope that you'll listen to future Counselor Soapbox videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching this Counselor Soapbox video. For more information, please visit my blog, counselorsoapbox.com, where you will find over 1,500 text posts with articles about mental health, substance abuse or substance use disorders, having a happy life. My books listed under David Joel Miller are available now on a variety of electronic booksellers platforms. Remember the photos here are courtesy of Pixabay or Wikimedia Commons and are licensed under the CCO Creative Commons free for commercial use, no attribution required license. Again, thanks for listening.